Hi guys, welcome back to another video in this channel. Today, I am going to be sharing a really, 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 really cool trick that I just found. And uh, yeah, uh, I know I'm, I promised that we're going to be doing the trim sheets. We will be doing them, but I can't cover them in like a 20 or 30 minute video. It's probably going to be like a small series. Um, because it's a really, really interesting uh, process, but it, it needs more videos, but we will cover them. Don't worry. It will be very, very soon. I promise that as well. Um, but yeah, today, guys, I'm going to be showing you how to create proper alphas, because that's one of the questions that a lot of my students ask me. And um, until now, like literally until today or yesterday, I've been doing alphas in, in a way that works, but it wasn't really giving me the best results. So I decided to do a little bit of research and I found this technique, which is just chefskis, amazing. It's just great. So um, here's the normal sphere, 2.8 millions in ZBrush. And we're going to go here into, into uh, Photoshop. So this is the image that you would expect to find like anywhere, right? Like just I found this texture. It's supposed to be like a, like a tree texture. It looks really cool. And I want to convert this into an alpha channel. So what I usually told my students to do is just desaturate this thing so it's uh, black and white. And then play around with the levels so that you get some like nice darks and nice uh, whites on the on the place here. Which are gonna be yeah like your uh, like yeah the darks and lows right of the of the image, and then we would usually add like a like a texture here on top like a black texture, and then erase like the middle point right here. So I would tell them just save this thin thing right here. Let's save it on, on the desktop real quick. Let's call this. Uh, let's save this JPEG. Oh. Control Shift S. Let's go to the desktop and let's call this like bark uh, texture right. So this is JPEG. And um, I did tell them, yeah, I mean, this is a good technique. You're going to extract some, some information and you're going to get a good result. So you would go like here, say import, and then import that one right there, right? Like this one. Now, the problem with this technique is, yes, you do get detail, as you can see right there. It's, it's there, but it's really noisy. See, like every single pixel on the value gets you like a really, really noisy effect. And one way to kind of like go against it is either like get it like really, really soft to just get like a, a general idea of the element or, um, or try to like blur this thing a little bit, right? Like go here into filter, blur, Gaussian blur, and then add a little bit of blur to the whole image. Now, oh, well, do this one actually. So uh, filter, blur, Gaussian blur. That, that was my, my technique like uh, literally until yesterday. And then I started doing some research and I don't know why I didn't know this before, but that's one of the big things about learning, right? Like you are learning new things all the time. And um, uh, I was reading an article and said, the reason why alphas like this don't work as nicely is because you're not actually getting the depth information. You're just getting a grayscale value of where the details are. And if your image is, doesn't have like the proper like grayscales, then it's not going to work as, uh, as expected. And uh, that it didn't give a solution. That's the thing. Like it, it didn't really explain why the alphas weren't working like properly. It just said that they were not working properly because they didn't have depth. But then that got me thinking, what if we could extract the depth? from this image and get this thing right here. That would be quite the thing, right? And uh, thankfully for us, we uh, just uh, learned a very nice tool right here, which is this the Substance 3D Sampler. And we can use the 3D Sampler to just extract that height information. So let me show you super, super, super fast. You're just gonna like literally drag and drop your image, image to material, hit import. You let the Substance Sampler do its thing. Let's give it a couple of seconds for this to, um, to load. There we go. On the uh, viewer settings, one thing I like to change is change the titling back to one. We only need to see this right, right here. And look at this. Look at this amazing shape right here. So that's the actual height map of the image being like processed in the best possible way. It will never be perfect. I mean, we can, of course, like uh, modify and, and change things here on the parameters as we saw in the last um, uh, sampler video. Uh, but the, the, the strong thing here is you can actually just export this as is. I just export this as target files. And let me show you. This is the image that you get, this black and white image that has the actual depth information or the best approximation of the depth information in your element. So as you can see, it's quite different from this one right here. This is just a black and white transform image, which is how I was told to do it and how I've been doing it for so many years. And this is the actual depth information extracted from. Now, and to close this very short, but hopefully helpful video for you guys, let me show you the difference. I'm gonna uh, remove symmetry here. This on the top here, let's let's keep this at a strength 25, which is like the default. This at the top here, that's the result with uh, just like combining or changing the image from uh, color to black and white. 
And if I were to load the other alpha, this one right here, this is the result with a proper height map. So like, right, <laughs> right, this is amazing, right? Just look at the amount of detail that we're able to extract from the image and the amount of like effects that we get. This is what I would expect to get from an alpha channel. And this trick that I just showed you guys, you can use this for bark, you can use this for horn textures, you can use this for concrete textures, you can go outside and take a picture of something that you like, like a cool texture, we're probably gonna be doing that um, that technique very very soon and and it's amazing it's just amazing I, I i'm like every now and then i find this like little techniques that i'm just like mind blown by and uh, it, it's just amazing it's just uh, i i don't have words to describe how cool this is and how easy it is to get now if you don't have um this uh thing right here this uh software which is the 3d sampler if you don't have access to 3d sampler unfortunately there's not many softwares that, that can do this I only heard about this other one called Crazy Bump. So this is another one. I, I, I'm not sure if this one um, is free or not. It, it seems like like it's free. It's like WinRAR where it's free, uh, but you can still use it. So Crazy Bump will also extract height information from, from your elements. You could also use like X normal. Uh, like there's a lot of ways, but as long as you can get the height information, not the color information, the height information from your image, you're gonna be able to get this amazing result right here. And that's it guys, short video today. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Um, again, I, I think it's really powerful trick. So if you're watching this Sunday video, which I know Sunday is like our slow days, uh, then well, you just got yourself a great tip for your workflow. Uh, that's it for now guys. I'll see you back tomorrow. Make sure to like, share, subscribe. If you like this trick, let us know in the comments and I'll see you back on the next one. Bye-bye.